اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق Welcome to our 30 part Ramadan series on wisdom to feed the soul. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin salatan tufrihuhu wa tus'iduhu wa turdihi wajzihi biha anna ma huwa ahluhu ya arhamar rahimin wa alihi wa sallim. Allah bless you all and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us abundantly in these beautiful days. So today let's look at the words of Imam Sufyan ibn Uyayna, a hadith master and also someone known for his tremendous righteousness. So he said, مَنْ صَبَرَ عَلَى الْبَلَاءِ وَرَضِيَ بِالْقَضَاءِ فَقَدْ كَمُلَ أَمْرُهُ Whoever is patient with difficulties and content with the divine decree, then truly his matter is completed. Meaning he's talking about this person's spiritual uh, development, that the, the, the person's in a good place to be. Right? There's always room for growth and you know, expansion in, in some areas. Um, you know, taqwa and these sorts of things. But in in the in the main points, he's 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 where he needs to be. Someone who is patient with the divine decree, and he's content with what Allah has chosen. Let's break these two down. So, patience. I mean, the root word is connected to the word to a word for for a cactus, which isn't very sweet. Right? It's bitter. It's difficult. Patience is knowing. You're a slave of Allah. Allah has put you in this life to test you. And وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْضَكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ فِتْنَةً أَتَصْبِرُونَ He said, we made some of you a, a test, a tribulation for others. So addressing those others, will you be patient? So it's a command in the form of a question. Be patient. Show that you're patient. So putting up with the difficulty and being strong and resilient through it, you can feel pain, you can feel hurt, you can feel sad, you can feel broken. All of these things are part of the experience of the trial. You don't, it doesn't undermine the, you know, your patience, right? And the ulama have, have said this very clearly. And if you look in the tafasir, if you look in the works of, for example, uh, Imam uh, Ahmad ibn Ajiba, the great Moroccan saint and mufassir of the Quran, his commentary on, you know, the words of Sayyidah Maryam, radiallahu anha. And when she gave birth and there's all this emotional pain and, you know, she's having to give birth and what are people going to say? What are they going to accuse her of? And, you know, she felt, you know, a great degree of pain. And, you know, she said, if only I had died way before this. So he said, even that is an expression of emotion. And, you know, when you're overwhelmed in the moment by the strength of, you know, what's coming down on you, that's excused. But if what's what you shouldn't do is to continue and then start questioning why is this happening to me? This shouldn't happen to me. You know, you know, why isn't it happening to someone else? And what have I done? You know, that thing. So if it happens in the moment, Ibn Ajib says it's, it's excused. But what he's saying in the second part about being content with Allah's decree is that you don't continue that. And... In, in in a sense, you don't want to accuse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of doing something unjust. And in reality, everything he, do, he does for us is for our benefit. So, there's two things here. So, the patience, patience in the Sharia is always coupled, uh, patience when it means, you know, accepting the, the difficulties of life, is coupled with ihtisab, which is expecting a reward. Don't think that you're suffering and it's just you know for, for nothing no you will be rewarded for it so expect that reward and it makes the patience in the difficulty much easier to handle be strong ask Allah to strengthen you in that moment don't go around casually praying for patience because you can only be patient in difficulties so someone who casually asks for Patience is asking for problems, so you don't do that. When the patience, when the the calamity comes and patience is needed, then you can ask oh Allah, help me get through this, right? And <clears throat> so then, being content with Allah's decree, it means being content and happy and pleased that Allah has chosen something, a particular thing for you. Oh Allah, your choice, your choosing is great. I accept it. 
I'm, I'm happy with it. As for the actual thing, you may dislike it. Someone may dislike, and the ulama are clear on this, that there's a dis distinction between the qada and the maqdi. And so, uh, for example, someone may find themselves in a situation where they're struggling and they uh, fall into a sin. So they're not going to be happy with the fact that they fall into a sin, but the fact that they're being tested like this by Allah, knowing that there'll be some benefit from it, so they're happy with the decree. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful, kind, generous. He wants what's good for us. So sometimes the difficulty that comes can be intense. But the believer keeps at the forefront of their mind, Allah is choosing this and Allah is amazing. He is supremely merciful, supremely kind. Allah is not doing this to harm me, He is doing this to better me. And you bear these two things in mind, so He says whoever does this, his matter is complete. And this is something you should prepare yourself with. You know when times are easy, prepare yourself. You know when the difficulty comes, I'm going to keep it in my mind. Allah wants what's good for me. When the calamity is hit, I'm going to bear it in mind. It may seem difficult now, but let's see the end of it. Let's see how this matter unfolds and its end. You know, sometimes people go through a difficulty that you can't even escape from, but then look at the fruit at the end of it, you know. Like imagine a lady, you know, labor starts and she can't just pause the labor, uh, it's inconvenient now, we'll do it next weekend. No, she can't do that, but then at the end of it, look at the gift Allah gives, right, a beautiful life. So, uh, having these two things in mind goes a long way in helping a believer maintain a strong, positive, optimistic, view of life and knowing Allah is in charge and Allah, Allah is doing what's best for one. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to characterize us with, these, uh, with this contentment with his decree and you know to give us the strength to deal with the calamities when they come. But in general we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for afia, freedom from problems and well-being like the Prophet taught us. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.